Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. This week, Andrew interrupts his normal broadcast to teach on five keys to seeing transformation in your life, an overview of his course, A Sure Foundation, taught at Karis Bible College. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a special edition of our Gospel Truth broadcast. All of this week, Carrie Pickett and I have been here sharing with you about one of the courses that I teach in our Karis Bible College entitled A Sure Foundation, and we're giving this course to you is a free gift. What a deal. Amen. <laughs> so that's what we've been talking about all week. If you've missed any of these programs, this is Carrie Pickett. Her and her husband, Mike, yeah. are vice presidents yeah. of our ministry, mm -hmm. and they help me. Man, I don't know what I'd do without them. And Carrie graduated from our Bible college, went to Russia for 16 years, has come back. And so they not only help uh, guide all of Andrew Womack Ministries, but they're also over all of our Karis Bible colleges worldwide, which mm -hmm. we have how many? Uh, we have uh, over 50 uh, stateside and international Bible colleges. I know colleges. that we've been saying 70, but we that's went with our, to... That's with our Andrew Womack Ministries locations. We have 74 locations around the world. Okay, anyway, we've got a, <laughs> a bunch <lot>. of things <laughs> around the world. And what we've been talking about is about this uh, course that I teach in our Bible college entitled Assure Foundation. And let me just use a scripture to get started on this. We're giving this to you, by the way, and we'll be giving out that information. And I think it's, is it tomorrow's the last day we're going to offer it over our television yeah, broadcast? Yeah. So if you're interested in that, you need to take advantage of it. But let me read this verse out of Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 8. And the Apostle Paul said, Beware lest any man spoil you. And I actually teach on this for over an hour. I'm just saying some things real quickly. But the word beware comes from a compound word that means be at war. In other words, be aware that you are at war. Satan is coming against us. Lest any man spoil you. Spoil here means to conquer an enemy and strip them of everything that's of value. And here's how Satan tries to do this is through philosophy and vain deceit, traditions of men, rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I know that the word philosophy is not a word that we use often, and we think of Plato and Socrates when you talk about philosophy. Mm -hmm. But did you know every one of us have a philosophy? And uh, most people don't think this way, but this is what this sure foundation teaching is all about. We need to have a biblical philosophy or a biblical worldview, paradigm, way of thinking, you know, uh, George Barna has been on my um, Truth and Liberty broadcast a number of times. I've become a fairly good friend with him. And George Barna says that there's like 68% of the American public that identifies as Christian. When you go to asking them questions like, is Jesus God? Well, then that number drops down to 35%. Hmm. But if you ask questions that line up with the Bible, there's only 6% of Christians that have a biblical worldview. And this is reflected in the way that we are electing people that have no morality at all. They are pushing marriage among uh, two women, two men. That's a marriage. It's not going to be long if, uh, unless the Lord stems the tide, which I'm believing He's going to do, that people will be uh, permitting uh, pedophilia and bestiality and everything. That's where it's going. And yet there's a lot of people that claim to be Christians that don't have the right philosophy, way of thinking. And this is how Paul said that Satan comes to destroy us is through the way we think. And that's what this whole teaching is about, is that we've got to get a biblical way of thinking. And this is what our Karis Bible College, this is what Mike and Carrie uh, helped me do. And man, their, their heart is just to help get people founded on what God's Word says. Amen. I tell you, the world has lost their mind. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and, and, and the definitions of what's normal and what's, what you think and what I think, there's no, there's no standard anymore. And they're trying to say that anything, anywhere, anytime, any place it goes. Well, that's your truth, but mm -hmm. it's not my truth. Right. And, and it, <laughs> you have to go back to the truth. Amen. Uh, because it's the only thing that's going to keep people from going literally crazy in, the, in a crazy world. Yeah. And so that's what this teaching is all about. Yep. And just real quickly, let me just summarize some things. And, and uh, we've got a testimony coming up here in a little bit. But if you look in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, I fear lest your minds be corrupted through the simplicity 
that's in Christ the same way that Satan beguiled Eve. And so you can go back to the Garden of Eden and see how Adam and Eve were tempted, and we can learn lessons that if we would learn through them, then we could keep from being deceived. So in Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And man, it's hard for me to go through these things without preaching on this because I have literally spent probably tens of thousands of hours meditating on this. This is one of my focus of the things that I study. But he chose the most subtle animal, not the strongest, not the meanest, not the most intimidating because he had no power to force them to do anything. He came against the woman, I believe, because she got this message about not eating of the tree secondhand. She didn't get it directly from God. The command was given to Adam, and then Adam communicated that to Eve. And so a person who doesn't have firsthand experience and revelation of the Word of God, it's easier for them to doubt than somebody else. And the th first thing he did was attack God's Word, just exactly like what we were reading in, Pro in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, that Satan comes through philosophy, through the way you think. And he began to attack God's Word. Did you know that if uh, Eve had just said that, look, he's God, I'm not, this is what God said to do, and so end of discussion. That would have ended it right then. But she began to doubt God's Word. And I don't mean this in a condemning way, but if you are struggling in any area of your life today, I don't say that Satan isn't a factor. I'm not saying that other people aren't a factor in things, but the ultimate thing is it's because you somehow or another have doubted God's Word. That doesn't mean that you'll never have a problem, but you will overcome those problems. You will be a victor over all of the things if we just stick with God's Word and Satan came against the Word of God. This is exactly what he's doing with you and me, and this is the reason that we're offering this course on uh, a sure foundation is to help get you established in the Word of God. Yeah, and I think when people either they, they're doubting God's Word, or I think you share a lot of times, people, they just don't know it. You know, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so those are the two ploys of the enemy. Keep them from even knowing the truth, or if they do hear the truth, get them to doubt it. And that's the reason Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, because it's the truth. It's only the truth you know that makes you free. And Carrie and I are saying this in love. We aren't critical of any of you, but I can Amen. guarantee you, if your life is a mess. And I know that I'm speaking to millions of people that your life is absolutely a mess. And you're wondering why. Why did God allow this? It's not God that allows it. It's our own ignorance, like that verse yeah. you were quoting, that we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's what you don't know that's destroying you. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God is the fountain of all of God's wisdom. Everything that you need to know is in here. I really believe that. Did you know that all of our scientific advancements, I was just going back and reading things about Newton and Galileo and all of these people that laid the foundation for so many things that are just part of our everyday life now. They were all believers Amen. that they got their revelation from God. Oh, there's a whole, he's, he's not only Almighty God and Savior, he's the creator. There is, there is supernatural answers that he wants to bring to our life, but he also wants to bring those answers through our lives to this world. So we actually bring truth to people, not just knowing it, but actually delivering truth. And let me share something with you that may, most people wouldn't see this in Genesis chapter 3, but like I said, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours meditating on this. Let me just make a statement here that Eve did not really know the true nature of God. And I know that a lot of people think, what are you saying? She was created in perfection. They, they knew God before sin. They probably knew God better than any of us. I don't believe that's so, because before she could sin, Satan came to say, sure, the reason God said you shall not eat of this tree is because he doesn't want you to know the difference between good and evil. He's trying to hold something back. They, Satan actually slandered God, and Eve didn't know God well enough to know that he would have never held anything good back from them. That's amazing. And if you'd stop and think about it, I'm, I'm not condemning Eve because 
uh, she was in innocence. She didn't know what was at stake. But if somebody would have told Adam and Eve that someday, because of sin, God Himself will become a man and He will suffer for 33 years in a human body and go through all of the frailties and be exposed to all of the things that humans are exposed to and then literally die for our sins, take God's punishment against us. He would become the Lamb of God and He would accept God's punishment that we rightfully deserve. If somebody would have told Adam and Eve that, I don't think that they could have even wrapped their minds around it. Who could believe that Almighty God, who the Bible says that the whole universe fits in the span of His hand, how could God become a physical body? And even if He could do that, well, then why would He take our sins? I don't think that they understood the depths of God's love. And so I believe that you can say that one of the reasons that we submit to sin is because we think that God somehow or another doesn't want us to reach our full potential. You know, when it comes to committing yeah. sin and stuff, God is just trying to keep us from enjoying life and stuff. <laughs> and man, that's, sin's not that exciting. No, it's only actually in knowing God that you start to enjoy life. Amen. I can say that, you know, having received the Lord from a young age, I didn't have to go through that all that junk. And I praise God because I've experienced more adventure and more life and all of that just in having a relationship with God. And that's what the devil doesn't want people to understand. Man, you have been around the world. You said over 30 nations <laughs> 30 that nations. you've been in. You've got people all over this world whose yep. lives have been changed. And meeting people and doing things that a homeschool cowgirl would have never done <laughs> from a town of 350 people. See, so many times people are trying to put God in a box because they put themselves in a box. Well, I'm only this, so God's only as big as my education or He's only as big as how I was raised. or only He can only do so much because my past is so horrible and was so large and so overwhelming. Man, God is so much bigger than all that. Well, let's take a break here and watch this testimony about a miracle uh, life that was changed and, and Carrie and I will be right back. My nine-year-old daughter, Elena Love, passed away a little over a year ago. She was dealing with asthma and a viral infection. One morning, she transitioned to heaven instead of going to school. My soul was hit with torment and confusion, full of condemnation. The enemy was telling me, this is your fault. A few days after she went to Jesus, there was a moment where I wanted to end my life so that I could see her. But throughout the night, I was listening to spirit, soul, and body, and another one of Andrew Womack's teachings called self-centeredness, the source of grief. So at one point during the early morning, I woke up hearing Andrew Womack explaining how I had so much to be grateful for. All of a sudden, the thoughts of heaviness and suicide lost their grip. And the truth that he was speaking, it shut those harmful thoughts down. God was speaking to me. He was saying, relax, I have her. She's with me. No one can care for her like I can. Andrea, live. I was able to be genuinely grateful. Two months later, I was enrolled in Karis Bible College, Atlanta, and it was literally the best decision I've ever made. I'm learning about the Prince of Peace who has my daughter forever. God has used Karis to fortify my life with such encouragement so that I want to pour out that encouragement on others like never before. In this world, you'll have trouble, but we have control over our heart. And so his word shows us how to let did not be troubled. We pray in the Spirit, we meditate the Word of God, and that's how we stay anchored in God's love. Man, that's awesome. I tell you, that is one powerful testimony. You know, most people get upset at my teaching on how to deal with grief because the very first thing that I teach is that grief is actually selfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and man, most people just rebel at that. But honestly, if you're loved one that you've lost is like what Andrea was talking about. And if you know that they're with the Lord, they're more alive than they've ever been. Amen. We just had one of our employees die just this uh, Christmas Eve. And I was talking to the widow and she was just praising God and so happy. 
And I, I even commented, I said, this is amazing how you're taking this. And she said, he was healed four years ago listening to your teaching on uh, healing, and he was healed of cancer when he was sent home to die and said, we had four extra years. And yep. she just was focused on that instead of thinking about her loss. And man, this is what the Word of God will do. It'll change your perspective on life. Yeah, you know, what the world says is, is you have to be devastated or you have to be limited or you can never go someplace. Man, the world, the Word breaks all of those lies and it, it takes you into a whole other realm, really, truly a kingdom, supernatural realm. And we aren't saying that, you know, you, you don't miss a person and that you no. don't have a grief, but you don't have the grief of this world where it takes you years. Yep. You know, my brother lost his wife in a car wreck and for about two months, he was just shattered. He was unable to function. And I called him often and talked to him. And, and anyway, one day I called and he was just back to normal. And I said, what happened with you? And he said, well, the Lord spoke to me and told me I either needed to dig a hole next to her and crawl in and die, or I had to get on with my life. And he <laughs> said, I just decided that God left me here for a reason. And, Amen. and to this day, here he is a happy person. Amen. And God prospered him. You know, let me just point out something. I was talking before we use this testimony out of Genesis chapter 3 about how Satan came and said, Hath the Lord said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Let me just point out, the way he presented this temptation to Eve is important because let's just suppose that there was a thousand trees that could bear fruit and that you could eat of in the garden. If Satan would have come and said, did God only give you 999 trees to eat from? <laughs> By the very way that he presented it, see, that would have showed the goodness of God to give you 999 trees and only forbid one. But no, he never points out all of the good things. He will focus on just one thing. And you know, Andrea, in this uh, testimony, also talked about that she even thought of suicide. And man, uh, we see suicide like an epidemic proportions. Even we've had employees mm -hmm. that have committed suicide. And, and it's, again, this could be perceived wrong. I hope you understand the way I mean it. But that is just thinking about yourself and it's thinking about only the negatives. If you were to think about all of the positives, if Satan would have said, are there 999 trees that you could eat from? See, that would have reduced this one down to nothing. But Satan's uh, MO, method of operation, is to focus on the negative things in your life, the things that aren't going right. And I can guarantee you, you're always gonna have something wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean. Carrie knows me well enough that I've, I've got things that if I was to focus on the negatives in my life, I've got some really negative things. I could be as depressed as anybody, <laughs> but I've also got a lot of really good things, and I just choose to focus on the good things. And this is one of the things that our Caris Bible College and this course that we're offering to give to you, it'll help you to put things into their proper perspective and recognize that all is not lost and you need a biblical perspective on things instead of just letting your mind trail off and go after all these negatives. Yeah, I think that's why, why I love the Word so much is that it allows you to see not the things that are seen, but to see the things that are eternal. And when you start seeing things through an eternal perspective, your life, your job, your health, your kids, the, the situations in the world, when you start seeing it through an internal perspective, man, you can't lose your hope. You won't lose your peace. I mean, you stay in this supernatural joy and gratefulness because you're seeing things from an eternal perspective. And that's what's so powerful about the Word. It's like this completely different eyeglasses you see everything with. Yeah, and that scripture that you're referring to, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, the apostle Paul said, our light affliction, Yeah. <laughs> which he lists his light affliction in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 11. being stoned, and left for dead, shipwrecked, beaten with rods, beaten with whips, yeah. on and on. He had more problems than any of us ever oh, thought wow. about, and yet it was a light affliction, not because he had less afflictions, no. but because of the biblical worldview. I think we could yeah. use that terminology. He was looking at things from an eternal perspective, thinking it's just for a moment, and it's going to work for us a far more great and an eternal way to glory. Yeah. And see, if Eve had been doing that, if she had been looking at all of the good things that God had given her, she never would have submitted to this. And if she would have really known that God loved her so much that when they sinned, He was going to go ahead and bear their sins for them. He was going to come to this earth and die for them. They didn't know God that way. 
And let me make another radical statement right here, and that is that, you know, most people think that, man, if I could have been Adam and Eve and have walked with God in the cool of the day, or if I could have been the disciples that would have seen Jesus. Did you know we actually have an advantage on them? We can know God better by the Spirit through the Word of God. This Word reveals God to us. We can know God better through the Word than Adam and Eve knew them, than any of the disciples knew them. This is not an exaggeration. You can know God through this Word better than any physical thing. And most people are just trying... They'd throw the Bible on the ground to be able to have some kind of a physical manifestation. Yeah. So many people want to see. They want to feel. They want to touch. And man, this this is the mirror. This is, this is the Word of God. And you know what I love about the Word is it's not showing you you know, someday in the sweet by and by. Man, this is a mirror. My husband always uses this example. If you look into a physical mirror, praise God, when you look into a physical mirror, you see who you are today because it doesn't show you who you are 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there would, none of us women would own one, right? <laughs> so we've got now, right? But when you look into the Word of God, it talks that this is a perfect law of liberty. It shows you exactly your freedom, your promises, the truth who you are today, not someday in the sweet by and by, will God do this for me? But no, this is who you are today. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. And I tell you, this is what we're trying to get across is that we want to help establish a sure foundation, a biblical Amen. foundation. And if you would let us, we would like to send this uh, eight-hour course to you talking on the, the very things that we're talking about right here, but just going into so much more depth. So how do they get that, Carrie? CarisCourse.com is where we have this for you. It is eight hours, like Andrew said. Not only is it eight hours audio and video, so you can watch it and listen to it, but then it's got all the PDF outlines. It's just powerful. I know I'm a person that likes to write all the revelations. It's got tons of scriptures. What Andrew's been sharing over this last week, it goes into in-depth on every single one of those. So check that out. When you do that, we'll be able to interact with you as well and just uh, we want to hear what God is doing within your life because this is the foundation and like Andrea in the testimony if different things in life come man you tether yourself to the word of God that is your freedom today and there's a lot of people that honestly draw boundaries and say well yeah God can help me unless it's losing somebody mm -hmm. unless it's getting a divorce or you know they just draw boundaries and thinks that they can't do it but Andrea is giving a testimony that man, even if you lose your child, that God can give you a totally different perspective on things. And I'm, I'm promising there's not a single person watching this broadcast that has any problem that the Word of God wouldn't fix. But it doesn't happen automatically. It says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And it's only the truth you know that makes you free. So we want to give this course to you. And I believe it'd be a real, real blessing to you. So tomorrow is going to be our last day to offer yeah, this. Yeah, so this is this is a limited time offer. So I'm encouraging you, please reach out today. We look forward to sending this to you. You're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And so our announcer is going to give you more information. But again, I know that many of you are saying, man, I could use this. You recognize there's a need, but you got to do something. We would send it to you if I had your address. Mm -hmm. I don't. You've got to contact us. And we've got people standing by at our phone center 24 hours a day and you can call. We're taking away all of your objections. It's not going to cost you any money. Why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you want your life to be changed? I believe that this is God's will for you. So call, write, listen to our announcer, and please take advantage of this offer today. Today, Andrew is offering you his eight-lesson course, A Sure Foundation, free of charge. Simply visit the website at charischourse.com and enter your email to gain free access. I want to let you know that we are giving away a free Charis course. It's the first course that I teach in our curriculum in our Bible college. It's entitled A Sure Foundation, and it's a free course. It's a giveaway that we are giving to people just so that you can sample what Charis Bible College is all about. So you can go to charischourse.com and you can get this free course that we're offering. It's an eight-hour teaching. I promise you to be a blessing. Check it out. Do you desire to see growth in areas of your life, but every time you try, you become sidetracked or discouraged? Well, through this course, you'll discover God's roadmap for lasting transformation, growth, and fruitfulness. When you understand and cooperate with God's system, change becomes practically effortless. 
Learn the simple steps needed to establish your footing on the firm foundation of God's Word and start experiencing life as He intended. This powerful course is taught in Curis Bible College Year One and is changing the lives of our students all around the world. By signing up for free at CurisCourse.com, you'll gain access to all the course resources that a Curis Bible College student enjoys. You'll receive access to the video teachings, audio teachings, and the lesson outline PDFs. Discover God's path for you to experience effortless growth, transformation, peace, and fulfillment in your walk with God. This amazing offer is only available for a short time and is closing soon. Sign up for your free Keras Bible College course at kerascourse.com. We hope this resource is a blessing to you. Before I came to Karis, I was a mess. I didn't know my purpose, and I didn't even really know who God was. But when I came to Karis, I learned who I am in Christ. I learned identity. I learned to have a relationship with God, and I met Christ. And then it was after first and second year getting a foundation. It was in third year that I discovered my purpose. I discovered my destiny, and I walk in my call every day now. I walk in relationship with God daily, and my life is not the same. There's no going back. So come to Karis, discover your purpose, Find your destiny and walk in your calling. You were created with a purpose, written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow Him. You were designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. We want to help you to know God, experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. I'd like to encourage you to pray about whether or not God wants you to participate in our Karis Bible College. You know, Bible College is powerful. We are seeing people's lives change. And I know that some of you are thinking, well, I can't come to Colorado. Well, we have extension schools literally scattered all over the world. And somebody says, but there isn't one in my area. Well, we've got an online course where you actually become a part of a class. You can work at your own pace, but you do have to complete the materials in a certain given time. We've got a lot of ways for you to take advantage of it, so please pray about it and then join us at Karis Bible College.